So in this video, we're gonna show you how we installed this tankless water heater. Tanklesses need quite a few things in order to work properly. Things that we have to consider for a tankless are, uh, where are we gonna run the intake and exhaust piping for the unit? Where are we gonna get our electrical power for the unit? Where are we gonna run the drain line for the unit? And how are we gonna run the water lines for the unit? And then finally, what are we gonna do about a gas line for this unit? When we came to install this guy, the first thing we had to do was get the old water heater out of here. We drained down their old water heater, cut all the water lines away from it, disconnected the electrical to it. We pulled that water heater out of the home. Once it was out of the way, that cleared the slate for a new tankless. Electric water heaters are really, really expensive to operate. If we can put a tankless in there, that lowers the operating costs and also gives them endless hot water. We decided where we wanted to mount the tankless on the wall, and we took some precise measurements so that we could make sure the tankless was gonna be exactly where we wanted it to be. In this case, it was a little unique because half the wall was concrete and half the wall was wood. We really just, the only thing we this wild coil, coiled up, up here. The very next thing we can do is just put brackets on, figure out what we need for bracketry. You gotta pull the cover off and work on it. The last thing you want is the thing down here to where you're working on oh, like yeah. this. We took those precise measurements, got the tankless exactly where we wanted to. Nope. Getting it out of the box. Bracket on and then just double check our... We like it. And then we started making all of our connections to the unit. The cold is usually pretty straightforward. The hot, we usually, we usually kind of kick it at like a 45 degree angle. Because if you run it straight down, then this flushing port runs right into your gas line. I'm gonna take it, maybe both of us because of this gas line here, so. Essentially what's gonna happen inside this unit is we've got cold water coming down from the ceiling that used to go to the old hot water heater. That cold water runs down the side of the unit and in through the cold inlet isolation valve here at the bottom. This one goes on the cold, short of one goes on the hot. It uses like 95% of the heat that it creates to heat the water. It actually uses that in the water. It only wastes 5% of its heat. And anytime you do that, you make it condense within the appliance or within the flue piping. That's why the flue piping needs to be plastic. It is for one, the temperature is down low enough, it can be plastic and not melt it. But then also, there's so much humidity in that exhaust piping, it will actually condense and then run water down the flue piping through the unit, and then it'll actually have water running out the bottom of the unit while it's running. It doesn't mean it's leaking or anything else. What it means is we're at maximum efficiency. So. Uh, just like his furnace here has water running out of the bottom of it, whenever it's heating, the water heater will be the same. A lot of people may ask as well, what makes us decide what material we're gonna use for piping? And we let the house decide that. If the house is all copper and we're replacing a water heater, we go back with all copper. If the house is all PEX and we're replacing a water heater, we go back with all PEX. So we just let the house set the theme on that. PEX piping likes to come in all kinds of colors. You can get red or blue or white. We always just do white because the water doesn't care what color it is. If you do red and blue and then you run out of one and have to use the other, it looks a little weird having a blue pipe on a hot line or a red pipe on a cold line. Inside the unit, there is a whole lot of wizardry and magic going on to basically make that cold water hot water. As it's as, as fast as water is coming through the unit, it comes out hot. And as you can see, it's set to 120 degrees. If somebody's running a faucet right now and they're getting 120 degree water because that's what it's set at. So hot water comes out of the bottom of the unit and then travels back up into the existing hot water piping in the home. The gas line for the furnace was actually fairly close as well. So we were able to make that connection fairly easily. Uh, the unit is fed with natural gas from this nice large one inch gas line here. Live gas line opening up in three, two, one. We good? Ah, the smell of progress. We are gonna need a three quarter by half bell reducer. Cause I'll need a various length nipple here, here, and here, and here. One of the unique things about the Navian unit, it has a negative pressure gas valve in it. So what that means is they connected the gas inlet valve to the exhaust blower. The harder the exhaust blower is blowing, it actually sucks gas into the unit instead of requiring the natural pressure that's in the piping to push gas into the unit. This is important 
because it allows us to use half inch gas piping if we want. We don't have to use three quarter inch gas piping. And especially for a short run like this, the half inch is plenty fine. Gas is on. We still have a pressure relief valve on the side of the unit. That's for safety in case the water were to get too hot or the pressure build too high. The floor drain next to the furnace, that was fairly close. So we were able to make that connection without having to run too far across the floor. The unit is a high efficiency gas appliance. And because of that, it will create condensation in the burners and also in the exhaust. So we have to give that condensation somewhere to go so it goes down this drain. The older contractor, he used screws and screwed down brackets on here. Well, those screws will rust over time. They're already really rusty. That was the new construction contractor that whatever, whatever they were doing for new construction. What I do is I take a zip tie and I run it down through and back up and I use a zip tie because a zip tie will never rust. It'll never rot. It'll always just be there. We didn't have an outlet close by, but what we were able to do is we were able to repurpose the furnace service switch to a switch outlet combination. They don't consume much power at all. They don't need to be on a dedicated circuit. Really all it's powering is like a control board and a blower, a small fan. We don't have to do much for power. So what I'm probably gonna do is this outlet right here, probably gonna pull that apart and put in a switch outlet combination where it's got a switch up top and then an outlet below it. And the tankless can plug right into there. And everything else is just a, junction box probably for lights in here another thing whenever you are doing anything tankless related or any water appliance that plugs in you always want to leave a loop between your appliance and where it plugs in so that way if a leak develops and water is running down this cord it will drip off the cord before climbing up the cord and going to where it plugs in so you would never want to plug this in underneath the tankless because then you might have a situation where water is running into the outlet and that's not good because i don't know if you know this but water and electricity don't mix too well but what we were able to do is we were able to repurpose the furnace service switch to a switch outlet combination to where we have a switch on top and, a, and an outlet on the bottom. And so we were able to plug the tankless into that outlet on the bottom. I love that noise. This is live now. This furnace switch still services the furnace. If we were to turn this switch off, this outlet still has power. So that way, is if a furnace repairman is here working on the furnace, they don't lose hot water while all that's going on. Tanklesses are kind of unique. They breathe their fresh air in from the outdoors. This pipe here is the exhaust pipe. This pipe here is the intake pipe. Both of these pipes, they kind of crisscross and zigzag through this basement, but both of these pipes run to the outdoors. We're actually finishing these holes outside. I'm not gonna drill them all the way because when the drill bit pokes through the other side it can kind of blow out that wood a little bit and we don't want to do that to the exterior of the house so we drill it most of the way poke the pilot through and then we'll go outside and finish it and so we're pulling our fresh air in from outdoors and we're blowing our exhaust back outdoors. They call that a sealed combustion unit. In other words, all of the combustion is sealed away from the home and it's getting all of that combustion air from outdoors. That increases the overall efficiency of the home, but it also makes your tankless a little bit more efficient as well. We run two inch PVC piping up and around all of the obstacles in the home and get it to the outdoors. And once it's outdoors, we can put a couple of little turndown fittings on it just to keep keep rainwater from driving in it ultimately, and then we are good to go. Essentially, that is how we install a tankless, at least it's how we installed it in this house. Don't you go paint the whole pipe. To you, by the end of the day, these sunglasses get broke unless I take them off. We changed our meeting from Wednesday to Thursday, and Thursday was trash day, and I forgot to take the trash out, and I've never forgot to take the trash out. You are in my way. He's gonna run that right across my face if I don't watch out. It will zap you if you're not careful. I don't know why Austin didn't tell me I had a big gob of white stuff on my forehead, Mr. Cameraman. One time, I shocked myself doing this in the shop. One time, and Spencer freaks out every time ever since. Everything is so shiny and good. Like, this is gonna be so funny on YouTube. Where is all the stock on your truck? You'll be happy to know that I turned the breaker off. <laughs> what a gentleman. I mean, I could be back. Do you like this blue dress? Yeah, that's nice. Do you like this yellow one? Yeah, that's nice. Sweet, I'll go with the purple Do you one. like this red one? Yeah. Would you just wait until you find one that you want and ask me if I like it? Yeah, my good side, awesome. Mm -hmm. How's my beard looking today? Looking good. Okay. Comes here. 
Wait a minute. Austin, you probably need to go upstairs and see if that kitchen faucet is dripping. Ah, uh, it won't work in the tamper resistant thing. And we're still live electrical, so I gotta be somewhat careful with this. Did we just find something else your truck doesn't have? Maybe. <laughs> now Spencer always wonders why he loses tools. Because he sets them in hiding spots right here. Did you bring a coupling? <laughs> No, I don't need a couple. Dripping glue everywhere. That nail said I am not going in there. This glue is some runny stuff, man. Ah! What do you want? My primer. All right, I was just trying to get ahead of the game. <laughs> we know what day or what time it is? Ah! You did make me jump. Man, if we didn't line that out perfect, I don't know what else we could have done.